Maryland is going to beat Northwestern by a lot tonight. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And also video publisher over at Inside Black and Gold. So make sure you guys go to InsideBlackAndGold.net for all your latest Terps news. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. I think that the Terrapins are ready tonight to crush the Northwestern Wildcats. So we got a little pre-game show going on. The game is just under um, a couple of hours, and some of you guys might actually end up seeing this after the game. And you guys love to come back and comment after the game is over with. But I feel pretty good about the Maryland Terrapins having a opportunity to not only win a huge game, but make a statement against the Northwestern Wildcats. We are on a cold streak. And some may say that the Terrapins are due for a win. We've lost two out of the three of our big games out of the games that I really consider. Um, we're one and two to teams that include Michigan State, Virginia, and Indiana. We just lost by 14 to Indiana. We lost by three to Michigan State. Both games that you argued we could have won. I felt like Michigan State, we outplayed them the entire game. Uh, we just let that game get away from us at the end. I still really don't understand how. I still really don't feel like that should have happened. Indiana, we forced four turnovers against them, and we still weren't able to win the game. And you go into the bye week, the Maryland Terrapins do, and you got a lot to think about, a lot to fix. But I do believe that the Terrapins will actually come back better off the bye and will be ready to go tonight against Northwestern. And I think Maryland wins big. Um, I think for a couple different reasons. I think Coach Loxley should have learned by now that whatever he was doing in the past – after a buy was not working. Everybody knows Coach Loxley hasn't been good after buys, and I think that's one of the marks of a good coach. How good are you after you get um, after you get a buy? How good are you at preparing? How good are you at fixing what you haven't done well? And Coach Loxley hasn't been able to fulfill that part of being a good coach. But I think that he is going to change some things up. I think he did some things differently, um, hopefully, and I think it's going to look a lot better after the buy against Northwestern. I think the Terps are going to be ready to go. Um, and I think that we're going to change a couple things and fix what we needed to be fixed. Uh, there's definitely things. Uh, I think the secondary, there's some schematics types of stuff that we needed to fix. I wanted more pressure on the quarterback, the defensive scheme. We might add in a couple plays. We might add in some more blitzes. I think there's going to be a wrinkle in this game against Northwestern or or you could see a way where Maryland waits to USC to use kind of what they learn on the bye if they don't feel like they need it against Northwestern. And that's when I'm talking about when I'm saying maybe some blitz packages, maybe Billy Edwards run game, those different things, maybe a different passing um, type of attack that uh, teams haven't seen that Maryland hasn't put on film. But I do think at the end of the day, the number one reason I think the Terps are going to dominate Northwestern is because I don't think Northwestern has a good quarterback. I think we got to start there. Northwestern quarterback play has been probably arguably the worst in the Big Ten um, and some of the worst in Power 5 or Power 4, I guess I should say, without the Pac-12 now. Their quarterback play has just been awful. Um, I thought that uh, Jack has been pretty solid. They're starting uh, – uh, he's been he was solid against Indiana, but outside of that, look at the stat lines, and you're going to be like, this dude has been pretty bad. Um, at first, they were uh, starting this kid Mike Wright, um, but then Jack got back in the game, and Jack has not been playing well. Uh, I wouldn't say either. If you look at what he did against Washington, had an unacceptable stat line. Like if 
a Maryland quarterback put this up, I would be like, we got major problems. Went 8 of 27 for 53 yards and two interceptions um, against Washington, which just isn't good. Uh, there's no other way to say it, to be uh, completely honest. That's a pretty horrible stat line. And I think that Maryland has a better quarterback. Um, and so start right there. Uh, whenever you have the better quarterback, you feel pretty good about your chances of winning the game. And this isn't the case where it's like, okay, Maryland might have the better quarterback, but the next, um, all the other positions on the football field, Northwestern has the advantage at. I don't feel that way at all. I think outside of the secondary, I don't really feel like Northwestern has a ton of things that they do better um, than us. Their defense has played a little bit better, but I think you can still expose this defense. I think the one thing that could uh, throw us off is this Jack, uh, their quarterback can definitely run the ball a little bit at 13 carries against Washington, which is interesting. Against Northwestern, you need a better game, uh, 23 or 38 for 243. But I still don't think that they're going to be um, awesome at quarterback, and I think that's going to allow the Terps to play better defense than we have seen them. Um, and it might be a little bit of fool's gold where it's like, we come back after this game, and we're like, Maryland's defense looks a lot better. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They just dominated Northwestern. It looks good. The defense line didn't look better. Uh, the corner room looked good. The linebacker rooms continue to play well. But then it's more just like, oh, Northwestern is that is bad. So that's part of the reason why I think Maryland's going to dominate. Like, if you think Maryland hasn't played well this season, Northwestern has been worse. Um, I, 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 They haven't been good. There's no other way to say it. Uh, they got beat pretty good against Washington. Beat solidly against Indiana, lost in against Duke. They haven't put together a win outside of Eastern Illinois and Miami, um, Ohio. So I think it's fair for me to say, yeah, the Terrapins are going to win. And the thing about the Miami Ohio game is uh, they put up 13 points against Miami, Ohio. Different quarterback now, but still 13 points against Miami, Ohio is 13 points. Um, and so I think their offense lacks a lot of. Uh, kind of special talent. And so I think that the Terps will have a really good chance of dominating just because I don't think that Northwestern can really score. So you could see a game where Maryland wins 24 to seven. And I would say the Terps dominated Northwestern. I think you could see something like that. I don't believe in their quarterback play. I don't believe in their offense. Their defense is a different story. It's been pretty solid a lot of the year, but it hasn't been to the point where I'm like, Maryland's not going to be able to score. Um, I see Maryland's defense getting stops and I see Maryland's offense being able to score enough points. And I think Maryland wins the game by a good amount. I'll tell you uh, my prediction, my score prediction in the next segment. So make sure you stick around for that. But I really, I don't see a lot of special talent with this Northwestern team that will allow them to keep up with the Maryland Terrapins. And you got to remember my last reason for the reason why I think that Maryland will win big. We're at home. We got Northwestern at home. Um, that's not always something that you can get to say. And uh, I feel a lot better of our chances winning in the shell at home. And I think Maryland uh, not having to travel after a bye is is pretty is pretty good stuff. And I think that will give us a really good opportunity. You can't you can't talk about home field advantage enough. And I know there's one thing that Maryland kind of misses from their home field advantage is the fan and the crowd noises. We don't get a ton of that, but a Friday night game, people might be out there. People might be watching. I would not be surprised at all. But my whole thing is I feel pretty good about the Terrapins playing at home, playing in front of our fans. Home field advantage is still very much a thing. Northwestern had to travel from, what, Chicago to come play this game. So I feel good about Maryland not only winning this game, but winning by a good amount. And I think Billy Edwards also is going to be ready to go. Um, and so I think Maryland wins this game by a good amount. But I'll give my score prediction after these couple of ads, and I will tell you what I think about the spread as well. z Biotics, a pre-alcohol prohibited drinks in the world's first generally engineered prohibit. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. And here's how it works. When you drink alcohol, it gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydrin, 
dehydration that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break the byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night and drink responsibly and you'll get and you'll feel your best tomorrow. I'm not 21 yet, but I've heard awesome things about Z-Biotics. I hear that every time you have pre-alcohol before drinks, you notice a difference the next day. Even after a night out, I can confidently say that people have told me that you feel a lot better. Here's how to use step one, drink the pre-alcohol for best results. Step two, drink responsibly, pace yourself, hydrate, and get a good night's sleep. Step three, enjoy tomorrow, wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the next day. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on college to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use locked on college at checkout. Zbiotics is backed within 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund, refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college at checkout for 15% off. Hey, NFL fans, you can start this season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-plays, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you're when you place your first $5 bet, $200 in bonus bets for any $5 bet, that seems pretty nice on FanDuel. You can also bet on the MLB playoffs right now if you want to. We got a big college football slate tomorrow. Tonight, if you want to take um, Maryland minus 10 against Northwestern, you can do that as well. So make sure you guys go over to FanDuel. That's FanDuel.com. So let's talk about the spread for this game and my score predictions and the over-under. Will the Terps cover the spread? And I have to say this. If you're disagreeing me, if you disagree with me on this, it's completely fair. Because we haven't seen a Maryland team play decent. We haven't seen – not even play decent, play good, excuse me, not decent. We've seen a Maryland team play decent at times. We haven't seen a Maryland team this year put up a good four quarters of football – and the number is at 10 right now um, for the spread. And so I think it's fair for me to for me to sit here and say that the Chirps don't cover the spread. But I'm sticking to what I told you guys earlier. I think Maryland crushes Northwestern tonight. And I feel really good about it. I feel really good about the Maryland having the chance to beat Northwestern pretty big um, tonight. And I think that the Terrapins will be able to do that. I think one, the 10 points is a good number for this game. But I think, like I talked about in the last segment, Maryland's at home. Um, If Maryland was on the road, it'd probably be closer to seven points. But with Maryland being at home, I like the extra three points to come with us. I think we're going to be a better team at home coming after the bye. And I think after the bye does mean something. I know Coach Loxley in the past hasn't been good against the after um after a bye, but I feel like he's going to change some things up. He's going to do some things differently, and I do think Maryland will win this game by at least ten points. I'm gonna say they win the game by probably around thirteen, maybe seventeen points. Uh, but I do think the Terps cover. Let me know what you guys think. I know you guys all had different predictions, but you definitely can go the other way and say Maryland hasn't looked good. Uh. Teams should be able to stick in the game with them. Uh, Northwestern hasn't been good on offense, but they should be able to throw the football a little bit. You can take so many different directions on this, but I'm going to go ahead and say that Maryland covers this spread, and I feel pretty good about that because I just don't – I'm not very high on Northwestern, to be completely honest. I think they're potentially the worst Big Ten team we play this year. Uh, probably, I would argue – um, I don't see anyone on their schedule that I would say is easier than this. And they've definitely taken a step back from where they were last year um, and, their, and when they got a new coach and those different things and the culture changing. And a lot of different things happen with this Northwestern program. But I think they've taken it back to kind of not where they were, but in terms of kind of the record and what they are on paper. I feel like they've taken a step back. And with quarterback problems, while Maryland's Billy Edwards has played really solid ball overall, 
I feel pretty good about the Terps covering the 10 points. I think it's a fair number, but I think that they'll they'll win this game by 10. And I think they just end up scoring as many points as they need to to win this game. Like I said, I don't think Northwestern's uh, offense is going to particularly do a lot. And I think Maryland's defense is ready to rebound from some of the top performances that we have seen. Plus, Maryland has done a really good job with the turnovers. And if they continue to, to do that, I almost guarantee Maryland covers the spread. If Maryland wins the turnover battle, they're going to cover the spread. And so far through um, this season, they've done a really good job at winning the turnover battles, even if it didn't lead to a win against Indiana, which I still don't understand. But against Northwestern, a team that's not as talented, a team that's not as explosive, a team that I don't think is going to beat us down the field, I think we have a pretty good chance at covering that 10 points against us. So now let's talk about the over-under. I think the over-under is interesting. Uh, it's at 45 and a half. Um, may have changed a little bit depending on where you look, but I think that's a it's a it's a it's a low, it's a it's a tad bit low. Uh for sure. I'm not saying the game goes over. Uh I actually see the game kind of going under, to be honest. Just because I I kind of see it as Northwestern's offense hasn't been good. Uh Maryland's offense has been decent, but they're not, we're not home run hitters over there. And I think that uh, Northwestern could get some stops. Their, their secondary has been good. So I'm not expecting a ton of huge plays in this game, to be completely honest, because Northwestern's secondary, they have some really good players over there. So I'm not expecting a bunch of huge gains, uh, huge passing plays. I'm not expecting Ty Felton to go for 200 yards, even though with him, you never know what can happen. Uh, he can just have a game where he just goes, uh, crazy does something different, but I'm not really expecting that, and I don't expect Northwestern, even with Maryland's shaky secondary, to be able to go over the top of us. Um, I feel pretty good about this game going under. I I, I feel like that's what's going to happen. I feel like that's how uh, the Terrapins are going to play this game. I think they're going to try and control the clock a little bit, um, and I think Northwestern is going to try and run the ball more. Uh, then just try to throw the ball. And when you run the ball a lot, that makes it very, makes that clock tick, 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 makes the game a lot shorter. And that's usually when you see a lot of unders, um, I feel like, in college in college football. So I do think that it's a low number, but I think there's a reason for it being a low number. Plus, primetime game, nerves can be high. A lot of people in the country will be watching this game. Uh, when you play Friday, kind of standalone-ish, type of game like this, people will watch because people will watch college football, any college football they can get their hands on, anything they can bet on, whatever it is, they will watch. And I do think the Terrapin Stadium will be alive. And so I'm hoping that helps uh, Northwestern somewhat not score as many points as they may want to. But I do think that the Terrapins uh, cover the spread of 10. And I do think the game goes under score prediction. I'm going to go with Maryland scoring 28 points, and I'm going to go with Northwestern scoring 13. So for the Terps to put up a good performance and for um, the game to go under the uh, total, uh, not by a ton, but definitely for it to go under. But I do think Maryland's offense does get going a little bit. Three Terrapins were injured before the bye. Are they back? Should we feel good about them being back? I'll tell you about that after this ad from Robin Hood. With Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. Now the resourceful individual with Robin Hood Gold can earn very liberal rates of APY on uninvested cash and receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on the IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privilege of high net worth for any net worth. These gorgeous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up to robinhoodgold.com slash gold. Terms apply. For, for, for product-specific disclosure, visit robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold. 
So there's three Terrapins that were injured, um, got injured in our game against Indiana, which that game feels like forever ago. But this is something that does matter going into this game. The health of these three guys, because these are arguably like straight up our three best players. Um, starting with Ty Felton, who's been absolutely going crazy this year. And I just saw uh, PFF. Ty Felton, I think, is like the highest graded receiver on PFF this year. Um, he's like number one in like not in drops or something like saying that he doesn't have any drops and he had his worst game of the year against Indiana where he only had five receptions for 38 yards, but did get hurt. And I think the health of Ty Fallon, I think is extremely, extremely, extremely important. What he's been able to do this year without him as a threat. I think it really, honestly, like completely, honestly, I think it closes off our offense and I, th I don't think we're nearly as good, nearly as good. Because what he does as an explosive player and how defenses have the game plan for him, it makes it really hard to have to cover him and then also cover some of the other guys that I think kind of get off a lot because of him. So he got hurt in the game against Indiana, and he's expected to play. Um, he's practiced, but if he doesn't look healthy, if things aren't going good for him, if he doesn't look good, I might just sub him out and hope you can win this game without him because you need this guy for the rest of the season if you want to compete. Um, and I don't think that's a crazy statement. Uh, I think that we have some good young receivers, but this is the best player on our team. So um, with the highest upside, with the highest NFL upside, all those different things, I think Ty Felton's the best on our team right now. Uh, some people think he's a top receiver, top five receiver in the nation. He's on the Bolitnikoff Award thing now. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going on with Ty Felton that are really special. And then Caden Prather also went down uh, late in the game with injury as well, and he's expected to play too. So our two best receivers, our two best weapons, I would probably say on the offense side of things, Billy Edwards' best friends, those guys are both battling coming back from injury, are expected to play. So you see my point? That is definitely something that like, I feel like we should talk about Um because those two guys account for most of our passing game, and Maryland loves to throw the ball, our identity, all year, even though I've critiqued it. It's been throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball all over the place, um, and throw the ball some more. We lead the Big Ten in passing attempts. Um, and so when you look at Ty and Caden Prather, the health of those guys today is extremely important. Uh, you could see a big Caden Prather day, but – I do think Northwestern secondary is good. So if we're playing some other receivers, that might not go awesome because I think Northwestern strength of their team is their secondary. So it's like we're going to need good receivers to beat these guys. I'm not saying those guys aren't good, but having those younger guys, those guys aren't ready to probably um, probably just be open, create enough explosives, those type of things against a Northwestern secondary that's really solid overall. And then lastly, Dante Trader, I don't know if he's playing or not. Uh, he's probably he's the most up-in-the-air guy. Uh, it did kind of sound like he's not going to play, which hurts a lot. For a secondary, that's been bad, and it's really been the corner room. We need our safety play to continue to be pretty good, and he's been pretty good at the safety position, and we need that to continue. So when I look at those three guys potentially being injured, I say that's something that we have to worry about. Those are th three of our best players. Like, who else would you throw in to our best player conversation? Like, Glendon Miller's been really good. Uh, there's some other guys. Ruben Hippolay, of course. There's some other guys. But are, you could argue those are th three of our best players for sure. Uh, three of our top five players, um, definitely. And so I think health is definitely something to look at uh, this game. Are guys healthy? Are guys ready to go on this Friday game? We come off the bye. I think that's why Maryland's bye was in the right spot. But I do think it's something – to talk about something that is important for this game. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.